Sabine, uh, it's really nice to have you here um, in Uzbekistan for this Poverty Reduction Forum. Um, so if you could just answer a few questions. So can you explain to um, non-expert like myself uh, in simple words, why is it important to measure multidimensional poverty? So usually we measure poverty using money, income or consumption, and that's really important. But it doesn't capture everything. So, for example, if a child's not going to school because they're in a very remote area, then money might not buy them education. Or if they lack something um, that really requires a government service. And so multidimensional poverty looks at different aspects that are priorities for the country. At the moment, for example, food security will be something, yeah. building human capacity capital um, so people can be productive workers and and people um, so their capabilities is important um, having good housing and good conditions um, having good work that's well remunerated and equitable these are priorities for the government but they may or may not be the same as monetary poverty even jobs in Europe the multidimensional measure includes quasi joblessness and income and so a multidimensional measure looks at each person or each household and says which of these are they deprived in at the same time. And its value is that if you're deprived in one, you might not be poor. You might be uneducated but a self-made millionaire. Mm. But if you have a critical mass of deprivations, you're identified as poor. And then we can say how many people are poor in Uzbekistan or in different territories or data permitting down to the district level. And then we can say who's poor by children by um, different kinds of social groups, somebody with a disability or female-headed households. And then we can say, well, how are they poor? You know, which particular package of deprivations do they have? And that means that when you spend money to fight poverty, it's quite efficient because you're not wasting money. You know exactly the deprivations you need to move. Mm -hmm. You can figure out if you can address two or three with the same policy and save more money. And so with uh, limited resources as we have now, given the war in Ukraine, given the post-COVID period, we need to be very efficient in fighting poverty. And a multidimensional metric gives a lot of information that can make that more cost-effective and higher impact. Thank you. So um, why do the measurement tools need to be designed specifically for each country? So with the UNDP, we do a measure that compares 5.9 billion people living in 109 countries. We call that the global multidimensional measure. It measures acute poverty. And it's a common yardstick, and some countries have zero, and some countries have 92% of their people living in this kind of poverty. But if you have very low or very high, it's not a good measure for you. So for Uzbekistan, where we had it using 2006 mixed data earlier, it was very low. So it was the wrong poverty measure. Mm. And so each country has different educational standards. Mm. It has different priorities at the moment. Um, it has a, a, a different definition of good housing materials um, or uh, different uh, requirements in terms of sanitation, water, electricity, mm. Um, reliable electricity, reliable water, all of these things. And so each country basically needs to tailor the measure to their definition, where the definition is both policy priorities and voices of the poor from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. And it also has to look at their data sets, because ideally a measure for Uzbekistan would be updated every one year mm -hmm. or every two year. And so you can't be, it can't be perfect. It has to use data that are in Uzbekistan and make the best possible use of those data or minor changes. Yeah. So that's why we work with many, many governments, dozens of governments now have official measures that are registered as SDG goals, uh, indicators. But these measures all are different. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of commonalities, all have school attendance in them. But um, they're also different. Philippines and Vietnam are different from um, South Africa or Pakistan or um, Colombia. So today at this forum, um, what would be your three messages or three pieces of advice 
for Uzbekistan um, while embarking on this ambitious uh, goal journey to halve poverty by 2026. So the first is to measure poverty multidimensionally. What I've heard from the little bit I see in Uzbekistan is that there are many priorities. Growth, mm -hmm. social protection, human capital, food security, environment. If you're trying to do all of those, then it's quite difficult. But if you can collect many or most of them into a multidimensional measure, mm -hmm. um, then it goes up or it goes down. And each person's question is not, how do I get my indicator to move? But how do I play my part in poverty reduction by moving the indicators I can? Mm -hmm. And so it acts as a coordinating tool. It also politically gives visibility. You know, if a journalist says, has poverty gone up or down? And you say, well, income went down, but education, but health, but in infrastructure, but jobs, then they get bored and walk away. If you say income poverty went down and multidimensional poverty went down, and they both were cut by half, you've got a story. And so I think we have to be realistic. And a multidimensional measure is useful as an honest policy tool, but it's also useful for communicating success. So that's my first. I think the second would be um, to try to coordinate the different sectors, levels of government, and development partners mm -hmm. around that goal. Because again, each will have their own priorities. Mm -hmm. But if the ministers sit around a table and they don't send their deputies, but they're there in person, and if they are asked, what have you done on your indicator for poverty? Mm -hmm. Because we need universities, I'm a professor, so education has to focus on universities. Healthcare has to focus on you know, digital medicine. But we also need in each sector to have poverty activities. So I think that is important. But it's also important to communicate at the subnational level. Mm -hmm. So in Mexico, the head of the statistics group that did the multidimensional poverty measure personally visited all of the states of Mexico to explain their measure. That was in 2009, the first country to launch. India launched its MPI in November 2021. Mm -hmm. They went to every state and union territory of India to explain their measure. Why? They wanted these people to move the measure to be part of the workforce that reduces poverty. Mm -hmm. And they needed to understand what to do. And so the multidimensional measure makes clear in each territory, what is the shape of poverty here? How is it different from Tashkent? How is it different from Samarkand? And so uh, I think it's quite a useful tool to be communicated. And development partners, mm -hmm. because they also have experience with MPIs in other countries, but they also have their own priorities that are part. Children usually are among the poorest. Mm -hmm. So really focusing on children, engaging other institutions to work on that. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, measuring multidimensional poverty, making sure that the relevant actors regularly, not just once in a sensitization meeting, but twice a year uh, mm -hmm. or more often, mm -hmm. come together and say, what have we done? And they're held accountable. Mm -hmm. And then you track project progress year by year. And the final would be optional. But some countries, including China, which of course had a massive reduction of multidimensional poverty from 2012 to 2020, when they ended rural poverty in all its forms, um, they would gave prizes. You know, who has made the biggest reduction mm -hmm. at the district level, at the territory level? And these positive incentives, so often poverty, we feel daunted. I can't do it. But then when somebody does, it's quite encouraging. And then we have a good kind of competition of how can we do our part better. And yeah, so I think giving prizes also to businesses that participate in this work. Some businesses do the poverty measure on their own employee base, on their own value chain, say, which of my employees are poor? How can I, with ethical privacy protocols, how can I extend a hand? So I do my part for my employees' solidarity, productivity, and for my country's poverty reduction at the same time. So I think these are little steps, but they're very practical. They've done, been done and they've worked in other countries. So it's the hope, as a student of all of the countries, you know, that that could be useful here. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a very valuable input. Thank you so much.